Today, I'm going to talk to you about Gestalt design principles. Now, I've written this, what has turned out to be a very big course on Power Apps. And I was going down the route of all the functions and all the objects and, and all sorts of different things, whether it's mod-driven apps, all these sorts of things. But I, I've actually brought out a module and it's to do with design principles, that it's not just um, Gestalt, it's it's lots of others, but this Gestalt design principles is really, really cool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen. I'm just going to run through the, the idea of what Gestalt principles actually are. So Gestalt principles are were, were actually came out in the 1900s. So there was uh, a group of German uh, I think it was psychologists, and it's all about how we see the world, how we perceive objects, the importance of objects relative to other objects, and 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 it, it it you will I hope see that it's actually relevant to how you build your apps and how the people that are using your apps will understand them. Because let's be honest, we live in a world where these apps don't come with instruction manuals. So this is one of the ways in which you can help your users to understand understand things better. Like what we've got on the screen here, it's a hexagon. Um, they call it the honeycomb. It came out in about 2004. It's about the app value proposition. But the idea is that all these things help, all of the elements that you can see are helping towards this value proposition. And the reason why we know that, even by looking at it, is because of the proximity of those things. So you, we, I'm gonna introduce some Gestalt principles as we go along. So. As I say, the, the Gestalt principles are all about how humans see the world. So if you can just stop for a moment and consider what we're looking at here, what are we looking at? A lot, most of us, OK, will say it's the Olympic rings and so on, but actually it's not even rings. Remember, what we're actually seeing here is there's not one single ring not one complete ring here at all. And what the mind has done for us is actually it's actually bridged those gaps. With the rings that you can see that they are all related to each other because they've, they've got proximity. And so what we'll see later on as we, we investigate these Gestalt principles in detail is that we'll see that they're, they, they can be relevant to our apps. Now, I'm going to be telling you lots of things that are true today, but I'm also going to be telling you one lie. And that's just to keep you on your toes as we go through the presentation. <laughs> now, when you do Gestalt principles well, it's invisible. You don't even notice them being done well. And, and we will see um, a little bit of that later on. But when it's done badly, you end up with an app which is just really, really busy and, 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 and where it's hard to see what's actually going on. Um, so, and the other thing that's true about uh, Gestalt principles and the objects that we put on the screen is that the more objects you put on the screen, the harder it gets to decide between which it, which object is more important than another or how that object relates to another one. I hope I'm keeping everyone on on track here. Um, but let's be honest, you know, power apps they are just objects on it on a two D you know uh, on a two D frame uh, when we make them. So, as I say, Gestalt psychology, early 1900s. So, so now we're actually going to go on to what are the Gestalt principles? Well, the very first one is one that is around proximity. Now, if we look at these dots that we have here, we see that these, these ones are actually very close to each other. And we can also see that these ones are, are quite close to each other. And so for that reason, we might associate think of them as being you know a, a kind of collection of some kind um, and we also see that if we see this group here and we can see another group here and we also might perceive another group down here as well but we probably don't see uh, an entire group of all of them we might not see that but at proximity is a really important point as far as as far as how we we 
arrange things. And what you can see even in, in this app that we're looking at here is that these objects here, or rather these, these the pieces of text that we can see, they are close to each other. And the reason for that is, well, it's because it's a gallery, but it's also because they they have similarities. They, they have a relationship with each other. Um, and actually, you can probably say that, you know, you can start thinking about proximity. We'll, we'll talk about some other points that are relevant to what we're seeing on screen as well. The other point is around common region. And that's kind of I've kind of touched on it already. But what we're looking at here is that they have deliberately put borders around things. And because they put a border around things, we can actually think that, no, these four these four objects here these are actually related to each other because and we think that because because of the border that was put on there so it's really important to think about that that is an opportunity for you to make things seem like they are associated with each other, with each other if they in, in fact are so that's common region we have another principle which is around closure which i think is absolutely fascinating yeah. So many people uh, in the audience will see um, we'll they will see the panda to do with the World Wildlife Fund, and they'll also see a triangle that is sitting in the middle of here. But in fact, as you can see, there is no triangle. It, it's just it's just something that is a construct from um, from the objects that we can see, um, and it, it is a bit obtuse. But at the same time, when we think about icons, that is exactly what's happening with icons all the time. You can you can see that they that they you know that the, the, the mind is trying to 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 you know fill in the gaps and so on, and that's why icons work well. And one thing that's cool about icons and images is images get processed sixty thousand times more quickly than text does. So that's a nice one for you there. Similarity is another thing that's that's important. So we also because these objects are either similar because of the color or because of the shape, we then start to associate with them them with each other. So we might think about this group here as being similar. Um, we also will think about this group as being similar and we'll think about this group as being similar or, as well. But remember that the proximity principle will also make us think that these are similar. And it's OK if that's if they really are. But here's your problem is if they aren't, that's when you've got a problem. So you me, you are sending messages to the people that are using your apps um, when you when you place your objects on the screen. So uh, figure ground is another one doesn't get used that much. But essentially, if you place an object in front of another object, people perceive that one as being in front of it and somehow more important. Uh, and there's also this element of continuity, which is this idea that the mind will actually just continue the lines that it sees. And we, we've kind of seen a little bit of that already. Um, and there's also an element of past experience. So if you see a back icon and um, icons are brilliant examples of past experience because people use them or should use them in the same way. So here's the thing. If it comes to icons, use icons for the purpose for which they were intended. Don't invent your own new way of doing them because your audience probably won't understand them. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to um, move on to a little demo if I can. But I'm actually, um, yeah, let me try this. Um, so, OK, we'll look at a model driven app. You can see the design principles that are in operation here. You can see um, you can see the kind of proximity. You can see that you can see these ideas that are taking place already in here. And um, you can even see that these these fields are are kind of in a bit of a box together. So you can see that there's a, some kind of relationship. You can even see that there's actually boxes around here. They've actually done the border side of things. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, I'll just move on another one. Oh. This is where I don't actually know how to move. OK, F11. We'll move on to this. So 
Um, and so here's the Microsoft site. What we can see on here is that you can see that there's, okay, you've got the logo, you've got this grouping here, you've got another grouping here as well. And you can see this grouping uh, going on here, but they've actually done quite a clever um, exercise here. You've got all of the, um, you've got all of the, these icons that have been used together. And, uh, and you can see that there's, 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 these Gestalt principles are in operation here. And for those of you that have been um, been sort of astute as far as this is concerned, um, you'll actually see that this is in fact not the Microsoft site. In fact, this is just an app, and it just it's it's done to demonstrate that these principles can be brought into an app. So you've got these ideas of grouping, and I've used uh, I can't remember what I've used. I've I've um, I've just used galleries and so on to to make it do what I wanted it to do. Uh, whereas this, uh, this in fact is the real Microsoft site, but it just shows you that you can actually make an app that looks quite similar to to what you're seeing here. So I guess uh, this kind of takes me to the end of the presentation. I think what I'd like to do, if I can, is just go back through and just remind ourselves of what we've actually seen. So we've gone, this is about how humans see the world. It's all about the relative importance of objects. I told the lie. Done correctly, it's kind of invisible. Um, it's it's how we, we see the world. Lots of objects, it means it gets harder. Uh, it came out in the 1900s. You're talking about proximity, common region, put borders on things, closure for your icons. So, so use icons, essentially, and then use the similarity to do with color or shape. That's useful to you. Um, and then maybe figure a ground occasionally, maybe a useful concept for you to come up with. So. If you want to learn more about this, then you can go to powerplatformlearn.com and you can go through to the course and you can, uh, you know, you can do get on with the your learning there. It's actually a free course. Uh, there are a ridiculous amount of lessons there. I don't quite know why I did it, but um, but it's there anyway for all of you to consume. So that takes me to the end of Gestalt Principles. I hope you like it. I like it a lot. I love how you love built that. the site and then tricked us and it was really a power app. So you drove the <laughs> point home. I, I think a lot of people in chat noticed that too. Very nice. So your your course on on the power apps will not only dive deep into this topic, but several others with power apps, right? Practically everything. Yeah, it, honestly, well, there's there's two over 250 lessons. Most of them have got demos in. Um, I'm just going to put it into the chat. Um, it's free. Um, we do have we have group sessions where where I kind of pick up a top topic of of one kind or another. Um, but really, it's there for you to learn because I like I'm a, an accountant by trade. So five years ago, I stopped being an accountant and didn't know what I was going to do. I got lucky um, and I started doing Power BI and so on, got into the Power Platform. I even met Charles along the way when I was setting up a little group. He was brilliant. And um, and <laughs> sorry, I've got to slow down. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And um, yeah. And so none of this is familiar to me you know this 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 stuff i've just and i didn't want people to go through the same learning experiences i went through i want them to just learn things once if they can and not be going through youtube and just want, watching endless videos and watching and getting drawn into different areas they didn't intend to get into so that's the idea that's awesome you're a heck of a guy roy <laughs> do my best <laughs> right on very good. Thanks. And and come back again. We'd love to see another one of uh, the cool topics that you have sometime.